Hey, good morning, Pat here. And today we're gonna to talk about our future. Now we can't always predict what's going to happen, but we can have some guidance in terms of where we wanna land and where we wanna go uh, from this point forward. So today I'm gonna to actually take you through some of the exercises that are in the beginning of my book, Will It Fly? And if you've read this book already, that's okay, because a lot of times going through these exercises again can be a really great um, exercise <laughs> so that we can sort of reestablish our goals and understand are we in fact on the path that we want to be on? And more than that, uh, what is the new path? Because oftentimes our goals change, our lives change, things happen, things are different. I know, for example, during COVID, um, a lot of things have been reset for me. And I don't know if the same thing has happened to you, but slowing down a little bit has allowed me to think more about, well, what is actually important? Where do I want to go from here? A lot of times we run through life just kind of on autopilot. And as great as that can be at times, especially when things are going well, a lot of times we are doing things just simply because we've been doing them for a while. So it's always good to kind of reestablish our goals and consider sort of where we're at and who we are and how is this getting put into the things that we're going to do and, and are doing right now. So if you're excited about that, let me know in the chat. If you're here watching live with your friends, say hello to all your friends here on day 347 of the income stream, which is pretty incredible. And if you're watching the replay, hashtag team replay. Today, we're talking about your future. Here we go. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. All while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no fee required. The income stream with Pat Flynn. That's right, my friends, no fee required. I'm here to help and serve you. We got Stephanie in the house, Bill, GTO, Trinity, Mac, Sherry, uh, GTO, Fit Over 50, uh, Chris, what's up? Welcome in. That t-shirt art would be a great poster. Yeah, this is um, Optimus Prime on the DeLorean. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. I figured I'd wear a uh, time-based, Back to the Future-based um, t-shirt today for today's topic. So anyway, welcome in. Uh, thanks for being here. Hey, howdy. Live stream peeps, says Justin, Bernard in the house, and Celine. Evening from London. Welcome in. Grandma Goody and unpopular mom daniella andrew stephanie welcome in okay so again if you haven't checked out my book will it fly I highly recommend you check it out it is available on amazon and on kindle of course um physical book digital book and the audiobook as well the audiobook i love because i kind of went off script a little bit it's something i love to do in my books because we can uh we can have some fun so i'm going to save the big exercise for last something that we could do together uh here toward the end something that will require a little bit more thought and, 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 and thought exercise, if you will. But I want to start with a couple simple ones that I absolutely love. Um, the first one actually is is important because in order to... Hold on. Jarvis, what are you doing? You okay? I got Jarvis with me in the office again. He's just chilling down there. So in order to uh, help ourselves in the future, we also need to think about our past. And one of my favorite exercises here in this book is called the history test. So let me, let me read some of this uh, for you. Right, um, history cannot give us a program for the future, but it can give us a fuller understanding of ourselves and of our common humanity so that we can better face the future. So this was a quote by an American author, uh, Robert Penn Warren, and it's so true, the idea that, okay, well, understanding our previous self or history doesn't necessarily predict the future, but it, but it equips us for the future, right? So the history test works like this, and, and this will be something that we can do together. We touched on this a couple days ago, I'm, I'm remembering, because I asked the same question, but I wanna do it more formally here and actually go a little bit deeper with you with the history test. So the idea being thinking about the old jobs that you've once had, and I want you to think about one of those jobs, and it may be a job that you hated, it may be a job that you loved, but I wanted to, I wanted to have you consider one of the most memorable um, moments for you within one of your previous jobs. So case in point, when I worked at a company that uh, threw picnics for corporations to celebrate with their employees, typically during the summer, that was when I was 15. There was a particular moment that I remember from that job that I absolutely loved that actually has a lot of influence on how I approach my business today. Because there was a moment where a person had lost their child and I was supposed to be at the beverage station. We were not allowed to leave, but I left anyway and it allowed me to understand that I could still help people and even bend the rules a little bit to better serve that person. And it ended up not just helping her out and her find her child. I actually got recognized by my boss and I got a little bit, I didn't get a raise, but I did get just a, 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 some recognition for that. 
And I thought that was really cool. And it showed me that if I can help people in need, like really cool things can happen. Um, there were other parts of my job that I didn't like. And this is uh, going back to architecture. And again, this helps reflect the future state of my business and how I want it to be formed as well. When I was an architect, I did so much work because I was so passionate about the topic. But whenever I would deliver something to my higher ups, my project manager, my director, et cetera, I never got more than just a thank you. It was like, thank you, and moving on to the next thing. And it really made me understand that I needed more than a thank you to celebrate my accomplishments because it didn't really entice me or give me any excitement to move on to the next thing. I was mostly moving forward because I wanted to enhance my career, not because I was helping my project manager feel better and feeling like a little bit of recognition for the work that I had done. And I think that's just the nature of architecture in general. When I think about my career as an architect, you know, I have my fingerprint on several buildings around the world, but nobody would know that. Uh, nobody will ever know that. There's no really way I can prove that even. However, when I'm online helping people pass an architectural exam, I'm getting recognition for that. When I'm here on the income stream, I'm getting recognition for that. And that definitely ties into deeper understanding of who I am as a three on the Enneagram. If you've had any experience with the Enneagram, uh, you'll know a little bit about what I'm talking about. But a three thrives on recognition and value comes from knowing how much value they're uh, um, providing for others. And that's very unique to a three. It's not very unique to a three, but that is essentially the big motivator for a three. Um, and, and, and with the Enneagram, there's pros and cons to each number. It's not, you know, no number is better than the other. It's just who you are and how you respond to things in the world and how you behave and how you react to certain situations. The Enneagram has definitely been very useful for my wife and I uh, in terms of building our relationship and whatnot. And we just had our 12 year anniversary last Sunday, which was beautiful and a lot of fun to celebrate. Um, we, we had afternoon tea. That was our big event of the day because we're still in sort of locked down here, which is pretty cool. Um, so I'd love to know a little bit more about previous jobs that you've had, right? And and so if you'd like or wouldn't mind sharing um, your previous job and perhaps a moment within that that you really enjoyed, the important part of the history test is for you to uncover the things that you actually liked and the things that you actually disliked. Because as you move forward, as an entrepreneur especially, who is creating your own life, who's designing your own lifestyle, if you will, lifestyle design, uh, you get to incorporate whatever you want. You get to leave out what you want. It's very similar to if you're creating a new product, a physical product, for example. I always recommend going to competing products on Amazon and looking at the reviews so that you can see how other people who you are serving have already re already responded to similar type things. So literally looking at the three-star reviews, you can get a sense of what people like and what people don't like in one review from a real customer. I like this because of that, but cons, it does this, 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 and this. So that when you are designing your own product in the future, you can make sure to incorporate only the things that people seem to really enjoy about it and leave out the things that are inconveniences, if you will. And the same thing goes with our careers and our future. We can think about the things that we had done and experienced in the past and the things we loved about it, and we can incorporate that into our future as much as possible. We can think about the things that maybe weren't so great or we didn't love and then have either mechanisms or barriers or boundaries around those things as we move forward into the future. So Anita here says, I used to be a kindergarten teacher and a moment I enjoyed was that I was able to make the students laugh and how they looked up to me when I would teach them things. So that's really great, Anita. One thing that, that comes to mind with is when you are uh, creating your business in the future, for example, might there be a way for you to get real time feedback from people, right? You might be blogging, but in a blog, you never get a sense of how people are reacting. You don't get to hear a person's laugh. You don't get to see a person's response or see their shoulders and their and their 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 heads perk up when they get excited about something you say. So if that's something you really enjoy and you thrive, then I think perhaps going live or creating videos or interacting with people, um, you know, maybe more like a webinar or or even in person on stage can be definitely right up your alley since you have that experience and that was something that you definitely enjoyed. Sean has said, I enjoyed it when people were excited to uh, to see what I had created for them or to use what I had created for them. And you, Shauna, as somebody who's creating uh, not just food, but you're creating experiences and, and, and things that actually touch many of the senses, um, I think you're in the right place in terms of YouTube and how people can see and also you know take advantage of your recipes, your specialties, and put them into place in their own home for their own families and experiences. And that's so grateful. And I think that that can help you move forward, not just in terms of the responses you get from people who use the things and the recipes that you put together, but just you internally thinking about how your work has an effect on a person's life with their family. 
and the food that they're eating and the, the nutrition that they have. That is something that you should always be constantly thinking about, Shonda. And I hope that when you create videos and you're showing off this amazing food of yours, you're not just thinking about how to make the recipe look good on camera, but you're also thinking about the end user and how they're going to experience this down the road and how you can actually get them excited to spend more time with their family, for example. Mike here says, as a sales manager, I loved coaching people to help them improve skills and hit goals. That's awesome, Mike. So when you're helping people, I think that it would be really cool for you to somehow get in connection with your audience in a way where you can understand exactly what their goals are and where they are on that, motivate them to get there, and then celebrate with them. If goals is something that motivates you, then it doesn't just have to be your goals. If you're working and teaching and helping and coaching other people, let's have them be very clear with what their goals are, lean into that, but have you feel a part of that too. Whatever you need to do to keep track of those goals that aren't even yours. This is something I see a lot in coaching. I, I, I investigate a lot of businesses who are coaches and they coach and they're, they're great coaches, but they don't necessarily focus on the specific goals of their end user. Uh, of the students. Yes, they do, but they don't like track them in a way that they would track their own. But when you can get behind your students in that kind of way, that can become something that can even add more celebration on both sides uh, within your business, Mike, which I think would be really cool. GTO says, at my office job, I enjoyed fixing the copier. Told my coworkers to have me look at it before they called the text. People have no patience for copy machines. They deserve love. Ha ha ha. You know, and I think that maybe there's a little bit of whimsical, uh, language in there from you GTO with regards to that. But I think there's something to be said for that for sure. There's a lot of people who hate doing things that you perhaps are really good at that could absolutely make things even easier and actually make it enjoyable. So perhaps that even makes its way into the copy, right? I help fix your life's copy machine, right? Or I don't know, that's maybe a little bit too much of a stretch. But that idea that you can help people with these little inconveniences, so they don't have to worry about it, you will take that on, you will make it easier and even enjoyable. That's something that can fit in as well. Chris says, in my various management positions, I was always team building and teaching that I what I enjoyed. I'm trying to apply that experience to new endeavors. So team building, team building is absolutely huge. So when it comes to online stuff, especially, uh, magical things happen when you become the connector. There are certain categories of people, right? There's sort of the teacher and the connector and the, the person who's more the example. I mean, there's many different kinds, but the connector especially is somebody who can be very special to people because sometimes when two people come together, magic can happen, almost like two flavors to create a third. And then you, Chris, can step up to help people find each other. There are, in fact, businesses that are matchmaking businesses like that. Everything from helping people connect with podcasters to podcast interviewees to uh, um, you know, uh, mastermind group and, and collaborations, people finding each other. I mean, there's some people I know who that that is in fact their superpower is helping to build connections between people. Uh, maybe team building means that you go into existing businesses and you help them build their own team and you help them manage their own team. You help them through conflict, for example, which I know Manos does. I don't know if Manos Man is here, but he's somebody who does that too. So you just do you see how just going back into the past we, we often don't think about the experiences that we've had because we are so into the experiences that we're having right now. This is why I love history, why I love learning from the past. Sometimes it can be very difficult to go back to the past because perhaps it just wasn't the greatest. But I think that with, within that, whether it was great or not, we can learn and incorporate things that can help us in the future. So this is the kind of workshopping that I, I love that we're doing right now. And uh, we're having a lot of fun with it, which is, which is really cool. GTO says, OMG, that's great. Love it. Shonda says, thanks. I will keep that in mind. I was really referring to my previous job as a desktop app creator, but I truly enjoy the same when I create dishes, even more so. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. Right. So for me, I was an architect. One of my favorite things to do was the challenge of uh, supporting a client, a client who sometimes maybe just didn't understand the world of architecture, but we can help them uh, learn that. And the negotiation that needs to happen between a client who has their vision, but then myself as an architect and our engineers who know what's possible and trying to marry the two. And it was a lot of planning, a lot of project planning, a lot of coordination, a lot of um, going back and forth. But the magical moment when a person sees their building and we sort of cut the ribbon and they're walking in and they're looking around, that's very special because they got what they came for and they're experiencing it. And now they get to help experience uh, others experience that building too, right? So from a restaurant owner or a person who owns a development company, helping them through their vision. And then now they are seeing their vision 
helping others with their vision, living in or eating at or experiencing the places that, that are now built as a result of their vision, I'm doing the same thing. I'm helping many of you become entrepreneurs so that you can help others with the visions that they have too, um, to help you uncover your superpowers. And we're, we're almost kind of in a way, not one-to-one, -one, but in a way I'm negotiating with you and your mind in terms of what the things that are holding you back are and understanding what that means and how to navigate through that, understanding what your superpowers are to know how to amplify those messages. I think that there's so many great things that can happen when we, when we think about how you know, our past, like my work in architecture actually is what I'm doing now, just in a different medium, which I think is really cool. Martin says, apologies for being late for class, supper time in the UK. No worries, Martin. No worries, Martin. Cool. Okay, so let's move on to the next uh, segment. Again, we just did the history test. I'm Uncovering things here in my book, Will It Fly? We're actually running through them together, which is really cool. And I'm crowdsourcing answers from you and we can kind of brainstorm and, and work through these thing, things together. This first one was actually called the history test, something that you can do right now, thinking about your earlier jobs in your past to consider what things did you love about it, what things did you not like about it and incorporating that into the future too, right? Chris says, Pat, I always appreciate your clarity in your thought process. Yeah, uh, no, no pleasure, no, no, no pleasure. My pleasure, no worries. <laughs> so let's move on to another test that I have here in Will It Fly? And it might seem interesting that these tests are in a book related to finding and validating and testing your business ideas so you don't waste your time and money. But there's a specific reason I have this in here because if you don't know who you are or where you wanna go or where you've came from, it doesn't matter what businesses you uh, come up with, what business ideas or what businesses you get into. If you can't incorporate your past, if you're not thinking about where it is you want to land in the future, then you're kind of doing this with with sort of aim, with no aim, with uh, you're kind of aimless with that. So today uh, we're, we're going through again my book, Will It Fly? And the next test that I want to take you through is in fact the shark tank test. So this is called the shark, uh, the sh the, it's, it's called the shark bite test, but essentially um, shark bite, what did I call it? The shark bait test, yeah. So we're going to, play a little thought experiment here. And I want you to imagine with your business, your superpower, your, 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 your idea, whatever it might be, it could be the business that you have now or the business ideas that you are thinking about creating in the future. I want you to imagine you're walking down a hallway with some aquariums and aquariums on both sides. And it's kind of a dark hallway in a corridor and there's a double door at the end. You walk through the double door, you open it up and you see four powerful people on a platform on the other side of the room. And you see Mark Cuban, you see Barbara Cochran, you see Mr. Wonderful, right? These are our sharks. You just stepped into the shark tank and you're there to present your idea, to present your business. You're not necessarily asking for investors or anything, but you're pitching it to see what they might respond with. And so you pitch your idea to Mark and Barbara and Mr. Wonderful and, and any other, you know, Kevin Harrington or, or whoever, uh, Damon, and you pitch your idea and then Mr. Wonderful, like he always does, he sits there with his hands like this and he goes, all right, Bill, what is stopping me from hiring somebody to do the exact same thing you are? Why should I even work with you? Why should I be interested in your business or GTO? What's stopping me from just starting the same kind of business as you, um, Stephanie? What is stopping me from hiring an entire business or, or, or you know, starting something that would compete with you and, and, and just plow you down? How are you going to shield yourself from somebody doing that? And oh, it's called Dragon's Den in the UK. That's cool. So how would you respond to that? How would you respond to somebody going, well, what's stopping me from just doing exactly what you're doing and crushing you? This is where the idea of understanding what your superpower is is very important. What makes you unique to a point where, okay, nobody could to, do that or take that from you. Uh, or it would be very difficult for them to do so. It's not something they could just buy themselves into. Um, yes, in regards to physical products, okay, a patent or you know, a design or utility patent is an answer for that. But I'm talking more about you. What makes you special? What makes you unique? When we can understand more about that, we can then, combined with the other exercises that we just talked about, we can create something that 
everybody can connect with, who is within our target audience, who can understand clearly why they need to come to us, who can understand clearly what we have to offer them and why they don't want to go anywhere else if they find you first, obviously. And our superpowers are really important because this is our, sometimes it's called our unique selling proposition. But for me, that's more about the product, right? The USP of a product is that it does this and no other products do that. But I'm talking more about you, you as a person, you as uh, somebody who has experience that perhaps other people have not had before. You as somebody who has a, sp a specific passion and maybe you do more research about that topic than anybody else. Um, case in point, when I started blogging in 2008, in 2010, there was another blogger that came about who started growing and, and actually grew much faster than I was, even though I was even though I was blogging two years before them. And I know that I always say you don't want to play that comparison game, but it's very difficult not to do that. We need to compare ourselves to ourselves earlier. But it's very difficult when you see somebody else come about from nowhere and they sort of overtake you. And the reason this and we're now good friends. And again, I've, I've learned to manage that part of my brain. But uh, this person was so good at understanding what his superpower was that he just leaned into it more. And that's something we have to lean into. Who am I speaking of? I'm speaking of Derek Halpern from socialtriggers.com. Derek is somebody who had done a lot of psychological research. He had um, this passion for reading really, really deep, in-depth research articles from these colleges and, 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 and you know, scientists and, and magazines that were just way above most people's heads. So number one, that was a unique selling proposition, or in fact, a what I like to call an unfair advantage. That this, this is another way to, to shape it. What is your unfair advantage, right? And I'll tell you more about how I recently incorporated an unfair advantage into the space that I'm in now. Uh, not just here, but also into the new Pokemon space. So it's not something that needs to take a long time to sort of germinate. But when you nail this, it works really, really well. So with Derek, with his love for reading about psychology, learning about these things, being almost first to access these hundred long page reports that most people would never even touch, he can then distill that information and share it with his target audience. And his target audience was entrepreneurs and startups and people who, uh, who I t teach as well. But that's, di that's different than me. But he found his own unique take on it. And then he would always have the most unique examples. It was a very Malcolm Gladwell approach, but with a New York accent twist on top of it. Um, a little bit more aggressive than Malcolm Gladwell, but it was just something that put him on the map, right? Because he was somebody who in all of his work, he would always incorporate these really amazing case studies. Um, he was known for something called the jams study, right? And he didn't, he didn't do that study himself, but he read about it and he pushed it forward. And again, that was his unique selling point, his unique superpower that you couldn't get anywhere else. For me, when I started my business in 2008, I Took a, it took a while for me to know what my unique selling proposition was, but it took actually people on the outside to help me determine what that was. And it was the fact that I was being so transparent. I just wanted to help out. But when I started to notice that my income reports were getting a lot of eyeballs and it was making a lot of noise, guess what I did? I leaned into it even more. When I eventually learned that within this world of entrepreneurship and people who teach other people business that I was very unique and that I was doing it for family purposes and not to live on a beach or to live in a mansion or buy Lamborghinis, guess what I did? I leaned into that even more. So that was something that was very unique and different, right? So I'm that person now who becomes known for that, the authenticity, the sort of family-centric positioning, and I leaned into that. In the world of Pokemon, many of you know I started a Pokemon channel recently, and that's something that I'm having a lot of fun with, but it's something that I've taken a lot of strategy into from what I've learned here on SPI and just in business and in entrepreneurship in general. And... Number one, it took a lot of a little bit of research first to understand what's there because a lot of times you know this. We need to stand out of the crowd. But unfortunately, you can't stand out of the crowd unless you know what's in the crowd. I think a lot of us jump into it, and yes, we hear things like from Seth Godin, just ship, just create, and let it figure itself out. And I do agree with that to a point, but at the same time, I want to know what the crowd is like first so I can see what I can do to stand out of the crowd. I want to be uh, creating something a little bit different. So in the Pokemon space, I started to do a lot of research, and long story short, I was able to build a channel that stood out. I was able to build a channel that had people go, wow, this is different. I like it here. Wow, I've been so used to this, but now I have this. This is catch capturing my attention now. And I think that's really, really cool. So I appreciate all of you sharing sort of what it is that your um, uh, superpowers are. I'm, I'm, I'm reading some of this. I'm going to get to them in just a minute here. I really love that. But this is really cool. So what is that unique selling proposition in the Pokemon space, right? So 
Storytelling was something that I noticed nobody was doing. It was all about ripping and shipping, ripping packs open and shipping them to people or ripping them open and hoping to get that Charizard, and which is like the chase card in most sets. But it was um, a very clear path for me to go in. If I were to go into the space to create something different, it wasn't that hard, but it took a lot of time to understand what was what was in the crowd first, right? Um, high quality videos, right? Getting really up close and, go, and talking about the artwork, talking about the history of these cards. That was something that put me on the map too. And then finally, I'm using my unfair advantage of having, yes, a little bit of a bankroll to start off so that I can use that to not just like, you know, create, but also to give back and to give back sooner. And we created a video that um, came out yesterday. It's not even tw it's not, it's not even 24 hours out yet. It already has 12,000 views. And guess how many comments it has? Nearly 3,000 comments in less than 12, in less than 24 hours. Now there's a giveaway to go along with that. But in this video, we definitely took a lot of what I've taught you before about the stickiness factor and all that stuff. I'll share that video with, for you at the end because there were some things I, I did in that video that um, were very purposeful and are working really, really, really well that we can incorporate into any sort of niche that we'd like. Um, so make sure you stick around for that. Remind me if I forget to go to that um, because that's really important. And, and it is working. We actually, you know, YouTube is telling me... Um, People are watching this video twice as long as your other, other videos uh, normally. Um, so therefore, it's getting, you know, sent out to more people. <laughs> cool. So let's read some of these off. Mr. Uh, Camera Junkie says, anyone can take your picture. You can take your own photos, but only I can give you the Mr. Camera Junkie photo experience fun and easy portrait event photography i like that start that's a great start because it's like i love the fact that you're like well everybody can do this but i do this this is very important i actually went through an exercise like this recently with a person who's helping me uh, with my next book and positioning my next book he was like you need to have people turn their heads and go okay well everybody thinks this but in fact this is true Right? Oh, everybody knows the 40 hour work week, but do you know the four hour work week? Right? That's very different. A little bit clickbaity, but that makes sense. And in the world of books, you have to be a little bit sort of outlandish in that way. Um, the approach that I'm taking for my book is either going to be something related to um, stop learning. Right? That's a head turner. Everybody thinks you need to learn more. No, no, no. Stop learning. And that will capture people's attention to go into the point where eventually you have to take action. You have to take these things that you are learning and stop learning and then start doing. Or this idea of content bloat where we're, we're learning way too much and way more than we need to. So how do we filter out those, those learnings so that we are, in, in fact, learning about only the things we need to learn about and actually pushing forward and making progress, right? So that's kind of the unique take that I'm taking with that book. But... I want to know more, Mr. Camera Junkie, about what is that photography experience? Fun, easy portrait event photography. That sounds a little generic. What, like anybody can create fun and easy portrait event photography, but what is unique specifically about the way that you do it? Or, you know, um, you know, for example, Zappos, right? What was their unique selling proposition? It was the customer service. You can send back the shoes if you want, if they didn't fit or if you didn't like them. No problems whatsoever. That within the space of retail and especially online was very, very unique and different at the time. And that helped them stand out for sure, right? So I think that, um, you know, it's going to take a little bit of workshopping and it might even take you asking, this is what I talk about in my book, Will It Fly, to hear from the people who you've already served. So Mr. Camera Junkie, I would go to some of your clients and go, I'd love to know what do you think is unique about the service that you get from me versus others? Because they're going to tell you the words that you can then offer to others, right? That's going to be really, really important. Let's see. Rob says, growing a podcast with coaching for the service business industry, home services. My primary focus is around the free podcast information with strategy-specific coaching for individual businesses. So perhaps, again, thinking about the benefit of starting a podcast is where we want to figure out maybe more of that messaging and positioning, Rob, in regards to, okay, so a business starts a podcast. Well, so what? so they can have lifetime customers. I am unique in that I teach businesses how to start a podcast so that you can have lifetime customers. That to me goes, whoa, right? Because a lifetime customer is ultimately what we all want, right? Sarah says, I can teach you to knit and crochet. 
even you, the person who thinks they can't, because I know how to make knitting crochet accessible. For example, I'm the only person doing described tutorials in this space. That's really cool, Sarah. I think that if we can narrow that down to one sentence, right? I, um, so again, wordsmithing can be very difficult at times, but I love that this is your super, I, I would lean into that. I hope that when I go to your website, Sarah, or I watch your videos, you explain to me that you are the person that makes knitting accessible for anybody, even if, even, even if you have two left hands or two right hands, right? Or what do they say? Two left feet usually, or two right feet. So that maybe wouldn't work because maybe you don't knit with your feet either, but you know, I don't know who he is, but his beard and Mike is top notch. Thank you, Carthy. The beard comment, especially because that's something new to me. So I appreciate for that. My name is Pat Flynn, by the way, if you're coming in new, I help people build businesses on the side or full time. In fact, I help you make more money, save more time by helping more people. That's kind of the gist here. So I appreciate you for stopping by and the comment. What's up, B-Roy? Good to see you. Sorry, a little late. Promise I will watch it again to catch up. No worries, my friend. No worries, my friend. Chris says, Pat, I've been told I make people feel comfortable and heard. Is that my superpower? Am I overthinking this? Well, for, for one, when, with regards to what people say, um, you might want to ask yourself a follow-up question. Well, can people get this anywhere else? And if so, well, then what makes it unique to me versus other people, right? So the fact that you help people feel comfortable and heard is really, really important, especially with regards to coaching or anything related to mental health, anything related to, you know, a person's life and, and what they might be feeling. That is really key. But a superpower might be you taking that one step further. Not only do I help you feel comfortable and not only will I listen to you, but I can fast forward the conversation to a place where you can then feel motivated and feel uplifted or um, you know you help take information from people and turn them into actionable uh, specific advice that's not overwhelming um, you help people with their next step more than anybody right where other people Chris maybe they come maybe they can go anywhere else and get all the advice and all the roadmap and, it, and, and in fact you've noticed that that is actually quite overwhelming when people go okay well well, wow, that's going to take a long time and that's a lot. But you're so good at listening and you can help under, uh, help people feel comfortable in understanding what their next step is so that things become more achievable, so that things can become more doable, so that they can actually experience joy much sooner in their life, right? I think that the superpower would be I'm the best listener in the world, right? That that would be the superpower. And you, have to, you, you own that, right? And maybe... You know, it could you could argue that okay, well, how do, like how do you define what the best listener in the world is, or how do you how do you understand this? But that's where the purpose of a website comes into play, or a podcast, or something like that, where where you claim this: I'm the best listener in the world, and I can help you understand what your next steps are. Check out the story below from Jane, and then you can tell that story and how you were able to coach her, or it's a testimonial saying, "Hey, Chris." Help me out in literally in 20 minutes, I had more direction than I ever had hiring a coach that cost thousands of dollars, right? So if that is in fact what you want to be your superpower, and it is in fact something that's been validated, let's lean into that even more. Let's, let's let the messaging and everything go around that so that everything supports that, right? Therapist told me I had a therapist mind. I was their patient at the time. That's interesting. You could have sat and switched seats, I guess. That's pretty cool. I'm writing my tagline right now based around my superpower of technological patience. Ooh. I help you solve tech problems because I have more technological patience than you. <laughs> right? Technological patience is interesting. I'm just not technically savvy, right? I think that, um, you know, Tech solutions for the non-tech savvy. Helping you save time because you got more important because you got more important things to deal with than fixing your computer. I'll fix your computer so you don't have to. Um, you know, just kind of brainstorming that. Forrest says, first time on the live video. Yeah. What's up? What's up, Forrest? Good to see you here. Thank you so much for coming in. All right, so this is a really good topic. What is our superpower? Whatever it is that we're doing in terms of business or entrepreneurship, incorporate that because that's how you can combat um, Kevin O'Leary saying, so why should I hire you 
or work with you or invest in you versus hiring a completely other company. I have all the money in the world. I Not me, Kevin O'Leary. I'm just playing a role here. Uh, but he might say, ah, what's stopping me from hiring people to just crush you? What is your superpower that I can't buy? That we have to know because that's something that's going to have us um, stand out of the crowd. It's going to be something that allows us to incorporate what it is that other people cannot, our competitors cannot in there. So in the world of SwitchPod, for example, many of you know I invented something. You can see a box for it back there. It's a little tripod. I'm using all of them in the room right now, so I don't have it to demonstrate. But anyway, this is a tripod. It's a physical product. There's millions of other tripods out there. So what makes ours unique? Yes, it can do certain things. Yes, we have a patent on it. Yes, it can hold the most weight. Yes, it's one of the lightest. But more than that, yes, somebody could copy that. Like legit, a company from China could literally rip that off. And yes, we can combat that, but that's going to be annoying. But what they don't have is the connection we have to the creators and our customers, because we're focusing on our customer base. And even our tagline is made for creators by creators, because now we have this relationship with our audience such that if another person came into play or another company came into play, they can't take that relationship. They can't copy that. They can't buy that. That's something that's unique to us in the space in SwitchPod. It's very similar to the story of Bob the Baker, right? You go to Bob the Baker's bakery, you buy bread from Bob, Bob the Baker. When you walk in, he's asking you how your family's doing. He sees your son, asks him how the soccer game was last week. He says he scored a goal. He's excited for you, honestly and genuinely, and that's cool. And you ask about Bob and his wife, Jane and Jill or whoever the name is, and you just have this relationship together such that if a grocery store were to open up between you and Bob's bakery that had bread for cheap, you still go to Bob's because Bob's is the best, right? All right. GTO says, thank you, Pat. This chat has helped a lot. Well, that's why I'm here. Whether it's one person or many, I'm here to help. Now, I was saying earlier that these things are in the beginning of my book. So my book, Will It Fly? Something that uh, I wouldn't recommend reading on a plane. It's a little, I've heard people read Will It Fly on a plane and it like get, gets, gets them to look, kind of get some weird looks from people. Um, but the final test I want to share with you is probably the most important one. And this is called the airport test. Now, I want to give you a little bit of a, of, of a, this is the airport test in my book, Will It Fly? Look at, there's Beardless Pat in the back there. Trying to look all spick and span. Nice stern smile. There we go. Okay. So, Carthy says, Pat, I want to create a new niche in my regional YouTube channel. But I feel demotivated and I fear it will uh, if people will accept the change. Well, this is very similar to questions I get in the podcasting space. Pat, I'm interested in this other topic. Should I create a whole new podcast about it or should I run it on this show? Um, test it. Do one podcast video where you or podcast video. Do one YouTube video where you actually go in depth with this thing. Not ever necessarily committing to it, but just having it be out there because you might find that actually the opposite happens. People in, in, might might fall in love with it and really enjoy it. But the truth is on YouTube, people are going to be very honest with you about it. And that's something you want to know up front, right? You want to validate this up front before you actually put the time and money into it. So if you're afraid about it, cool, let's test it. Let's put a little Petri dish together, put a little bit of a sampling in there and see what happens. If it grows out of control, cool, you throw that Petri dish away and then you can continue to do what you were doing. Or you might love what you're seeing there and you've created something that is a cure for somebody else's disease, if you will, uh, as far as an analogy. And then you rinse and repeat and you, you pipette that thing um, into all the other places you want to pipette that thing into. Pipette. It's me. Hi, bro. Yeah, don't read Will It Fly on a Plane. Don't read Will It Fly on a Plane. And literally on the back, it says, Pat Flynn is the crash test dummy of online business, which was a phrase that was coined for me as far as the fact that I would always do experiments and whether it would win or fail, I would always give people information. Um, but again, reading it on a plane, crash test dummy, probably not something you want to read on a plane. So let's talk about this last example, this last experiment. That is, again, at the beginning of the book, because it's so important to know who you are and where you want to go before you determine what it is, the path that you want to take to get there. Um, so, again, this has to do with airplanes. There's a lot of airplane themes in, in this book. Funny enough, the, the, the title, Will It Fly, didn't come until later. It was actually, I got to give credit to where credit is due. 
one of my former mastermind member friends, he's no longer in the group. Uh, I just didn't have the time for it, but uh, his name is Roderick Russell. And he came up with this name after an hour long conversation about the, what, what the name of my book should be. The book was already written, but I didn't have a title for it. And uh, he came up with the title, Will It Fly with two minutes left in the call. And that then forced me to go back into the book and make another draft and incorporate a lot of the analogies and a lot of the things related to flying and the airplane test and, and all this kind of stuff. Um, it just seemed to work out really, really well. I then incorporated a story at the beginning of the book about, about my son on his third birthday. He wanted to fly a paper airplane. So I taught him how to do it. But before I finished teaching him, he was already moving ahead. He was like trying to do it because he's seen a paper airplane before. He's never folded one. So he tried to make one and he threw it and it just like landed on his feet. And he said, you know what? I'm not cut out for this. This is boring. I'm not good at it. And that was just a little micro moment that represents a lot of the bigger macro moments that we have as entrepreneurs where we try something. Maybe we rush through it. We don't validate it up front and we expect it to go right the first time. And if it doesn't, we're done. We go back to the drawing board or back to our old jobs. But again, when I slowed him down and I showed him how to do it and I saw him throw that plane and it lifted off and it went across the room, he was so excited and then he got obsessed with paper airplanes that we made a whole bunch of them from there. Part two, will be did it fly? Uh, part two is super fans, actually. Because um, if you're flying something, you want a super fan, like a fan that you blow whew, to make that thing fly even higher, right? Which maybe is a little bit of a stretch, but I thought that was interesting, right? My first book was called Let Go. My second book, Will It Fly? Third book, Super Fans. But it's more about the super fans who will support your business. So in a way, it kind of does make sense. There is a little bit of a story there too. Happy birthday, Gail. You're awesome. I read it on a plane. I will read it on a train. I will read it in the rain. I will read it by a flame. Nice. Cool. Um... Okay, so the airport test, what is this? Well, this actually came from, and it was inspired by Jay Papasan, who is one of the co-authors of the book, The One Thing. And he and I had a conversation, and through a conversation, I learned about this thing that he does when he um, has people uh, apply to be uh, to, to work with him at um, Keller Williams Realty. So that's where he works at. And Gary Keller, one of the authors, is the founder and the owner of Keller Williams Realty, the largest international real estate sort of agency uh, in the world. And when they hire new people into their business, they want to make sure it's not just a good fit for that person to come in, but it's a good fit for them to come into a person's life as an employee, uh, as an employer. And so they do this thing called the airport test where, and you can imagine yourself doing this, you can do this right now if you'd like, but I'm just going to take a little bit of a post it note as an example. So this allows you to think five years in the future. So I want you to imagine that you are in the airport five years from now. Again, we can all travel again, everything's safe, everything's fine. And as you're waiting at the gate, at the gate, somebody taps you on the shoulder, tap, tap, tap. And it's an old friend, an old friend from high school or way back in the day that you hadn't seen in a while. And they go, whoa, oh my gosh, it's so good to see you here. Or when's your flight? And you're like, oh, it's not for a while now. You want to hang out? And they're like, yeah. So you go to the coffee shop or you go to the bar or something and you're having a conversation. And, and this person, this friend, this old friend of yours who hasn't seen you in a while asks you, so how, how's life? How are, how is, how are things going? And you say, this is again, five years from now, you respond with, everything is awesome. Life couldn't be any better. It's awesome right now. It's the way, it, it, everything is the way it should be. That's great. So I want you to think about what would have to happen in your life five years from now for you to actually respond in that way very genuinely. Not a, oh, everything's good. Yeah, everything's all right. Vers versus like, Everything is so good right now. I'm so grateful for how things went and, and, and what I have. What would get you to respond like that? The way you run this exercise, everything is awesome. Everything is cool. When you... um, everything is awesome. Sorry, that was your fault, Bernard. So the way that you do this is you take a piece of paper, you fold it in half, long ways. You open it up and then you fold it in half <coughs> this way too. So now you have four quadrants. One, two, three, four. And what you do is you write at the top of each quadrant, typically you would do this with a large piece of paper. You would write at the top of each little segment, each quadrant, 
one of the four most important aspects of your life that you really care about. So in many cases, it could be family, finances, health. It could be music. Whatever you consider the four most important topics at a high level of your life that you want to look at. And then underneath, you bullet point within each of those topics, what would support you saying that your life is awesome five years from now underneath that particular topic. So I have an example for you. I have an example for you. Let me show you my. So here it, here it is like as it's folded, right? So you can see there I have my folded piece of paper with four topics. Yes, I'm actually doing this in the book. My four topics are family, professional, finances, and health right? Fi family, professional, finances, and health. And then you write out and you bullet point some of the things that you think should be on there to a point where it starts to look now like this. And again, these are all bullet points that would support the idea that I could say that life is awesome five years from now in family, professional, finances, and health. So let me read some of these off to you. So under professional. Oh, actually, let me start with family. Quadrify, yeah. So with family, I have written, uh, and this was written in, 2000, in uh, 2015, by the way. This was written in 2015. So five years from now is actually last year. So let's read this. April and I, my wife April, are 11 years into our marriage, and we are still madly in love with each other. That is happening. I get to go to school with April to drop off and pick up our kids each day. That happened until we couldn't go to school anymore because of COVID, but... Thinking about last year before COVID happened, my wife and I both, we would drop off our kids at school every single day. The kids are healthy, happy, and actively wanting to learn on their own. That is in fact happening. And every afternoon, the kids are going into the garage and they're learning something, watching a YouTube video, and, and then either drawing or building something. They're learning all the time. I cook and we have dinner together as a family almost every day of the week. Um, Wednesdays, we don't cook together because my daughter has hula practice, hula dancing practice. But Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, we are cooking from home. We actually subscribe to HelloFresh, hashtag not sponsored. And actually, my daughter and I, we cook together. She plays head chef. I play her sous chef. And she coordinates the meal for us. And I do a lot of the hardcore cutting and the stuff that would require fire. But um, we are doing that. Every couple of months, we go on a vacation, small ones during the school year and big ones during the summer when school is out. We did that. In fact, a year ago, again, before COVID happened, we were at this very moment in time, one year ago, we were at Big Bear, Big Bear Lake in California, enjoying the snow, sliding down mountains. And then we had planned two trips, bigger ones, Hawaii in the summer, and then England in the uh, uh, fall. But of course, we couldn't go. April and I trust the kids to make wise decisions that promote a healthy and happy life. Yes, I'm 100% present with my family mentally when I'm with them physically. Absolutely. We've talked about that before with regards to the calendar and how that's structured. And then my kids are super interested in entrepreneurship and learning about starting their own businesses too. My son is actually taking a course right now with regards to his YouTube channel. So yes, with that regard, in, in regards to all that, life is pretty awesome. So now professional, let's talk about the professional quadrant. I continue to get paid as a keynote speaker once a month. I travel to different parts of the world to speak to audiences big and small about businesses and entrepreneurship. In 2019, I spoke at an average of 0 0.89. I almost spoke uh, at an average of once a month. You okay, Jarvis? You good? Okay, you good. Jarvis, my puppy, is below me. Now, however, and like I said, it's always good to go back to these things. That will change. That is not what would make me happy five years from now. What would make me happy five years from now is maybe speaking at two to three conferences per year in front of thousands of people and spending more time at home with my family or traveling with my family when going out and doing that. I have written several books. So I have Will It Fly, Let Go, and Superfans now. I'm happy for you and your family. Thank you. I'm an advisor for a dozen different companies and organizations that I love whose products or services I enjoy using. So I'm currently an advisor for Samcart, Teachable, Squadcast, 
ConvertKit, Lead Pages, and, and three others that are I can't share right now. Uh, Circle is one of them. And so that's not a dozen, but that's eight. I'm an advisor to eight different companies right now. And I think that eight's a good number. I think a dozen would be a little bit too much. I would spread myself a little bit too thin, but I am exactly where I want to be with that right now. Jarvis, what do you... Hey. Jarvis got to the... Jarvis got to the post and notes, y'all. Oh no, look at that. Jarvis, no. Okay, let's move on to some other ones. Uh, this is finances. Uh, my wife and I never fight about anything related to finances. Very important to me. You get about that all the time. We never have fights about that. The kids understand, uh, or actually, the kids do not earn an allowance. But they instead earn a commission by doing chores and illustrating good behavior. This was at an age, I wrote this book at an age where the kids weren't ready to do chores. And here they are today. They make $12 every single week, if and only if they complete the 12 tasks that are on their list of chores. And sometimes they get 12. Sometimes they, um, sometimes they don't, sometimes they don't, but this includes things like laundry, doing the dishes, uh, taking out the trash, um, uh, mopping the floor, all those kinds of things. Um, we have an emergency fund that's relatively liquid. Uh, we have taken care of our kids' college funds. Oh, Jarvis, don't get in there. Come over this way. You guys want to say hi to Jarvis real quick? Come on, Jarvis, say hello. Whoa, there he is. Oh my gosh, you're getting so big. Hey, Jarvis, how you doing? Yeah, the allowance thing, it's like, okay, I deserve this money no matter what I do is kind of not the approach that I want to take. Are there more post-it? You like the post-it notes, dude. You like the post-it notes. There we go. But we, they earn a commission. They earn a commission. They also donate a dollar of their $12 into a donation jar every single week as well. And it's interesting because when we started that, they had language like, why do I have to give up a dollar? Why do I have to, um, you know, oh, I'm only making 11 because $1 goes into the donation jar, right? Oh, Jarvis, what do you? Yeah, he's growing real big. He's growing real big. Um, but we've since allowed them to change that language from I get to donate a dollar um, or the donation jar gets um, added to, right? And that, that's really important. No, nope, don't eat that. It's okay. I missed the early part. We'll have to watch later. Yeah, no worries. I'm just reading off a little bit about my airport test uh, in my book, Will It Fly? And I don't know if you guys are doing this right now, but I would recommend that if you have a spouse or a partner who you know you want to build a life with, you'd want to do this together with them, obviously, or you can both do them and compare notes. I mean, wow. Uh, imagine how incredibly powerful that would be to have alignment there, right? Uh, what else did I do? Um, I meditate every single morning and have a clear, confident mind when I approach every single day. I make healthy eating choices and I'm an example to my kids in that way too. Um, my wife and I have both become examples to our kids to inspire them to live healthy lifestyles. Yep, April, the reason why Jarvis is here is because April was on a run. I'm virtually stress-free and happy. Yes, and so you could read more about the things that I mentioned here in this book um, and see how now, five years, now six years after writing this book, many of those things are true. Um, and and life, I feel, is awesome. Um, now, of course, the pandemic made it a little bit difficult to do a lot of those things, and it's also allowed me to slow down to kind of now reconsider what does my next five years look like? Um, so I hope this exercise was really helpful to see sort of done in real time and to understand and again, the idea is you're not making a wish list. When you, when you make these quadrants and you start sort of noting things, you're not making a wish list. I wish things were like this, or I wish things. You make, you, you write the statement as if you are now five years from now. I am making healthy eating choices. I am spending one day a week on a date night with my wife. I am this, right? So it's pretty cool to see a lot of that now. Kathy was like, you accomplished everything. Well, I read the things off that I did accomplish, I will say. There, there are some things on here, I'm just going to be upfront and honest with you, that are different, that that are that have changed. For example, actually, it's funny. I have a recurring monthly meetup in downtown San Diego where anyone can come and join me for lunch. That actually still happens, although now virtually. Um, 
Every time I visit my mailbox, I get dozens of thank you letters from people I've helped. Still happens. But other things like, you know, I've completed my first full marathon. I have not done that yet. Um, I'm continuing to compete in triathlons and have even begun training for my first Ironman. No. Uh, I have a six pack without having to suck it in and flex. No, not yet. I mean, I have to flex, but. <laughs> so some things change. And again, the whole point of this is this is a sheet of paper that will now give you direction. Because here's the big thing with this, and this is my final point here. If you have an opportunity, maybe a business opportunity, maybe something, if you don't have a filter to help you make those decisions, you might make the wrong decision. But now that I know, based on the airport test, where I want to go, any decision that I can understand doesn't take me there, I can now easily say no to. There was a moment in time where a company reached out to me to want a partner to a point where I would become probably one day CEO of the company. This is a billion dollar, like literally a billion dollar opportunity with regards to website hosting and et cetera. It was very clear that my answer was going to be no right from the start. As soon as I understood that I would have to take care of hundreds of people, that I would own um, several properties that would uh, have storage and servers and such, and that I'd have to be in an office all day to report to management, um, that didn't fit into the life that I wanted to live with regards to my family. That could have helped me with my finances, but it wouldn't have helped me with my health. And it wasn't where I wanted to end up professionally. So again, having this idea of, you know, the piece of paper as a filter is really important. I have mine in my desk down here, but I can't access it because it's blocked by some camera stuff. But it is something that I look at all the time. And this is just a good reminder for me as well to go back to that and, and sort of reestablish, okay, five years from here, especially after code and slowing down and understanding more about myself, um, how we can how we can do this. I did not turn Elon Musk down. I turned Tony Robbins down. <laughs> he wanted to be on my podcast and I said no. So yeah. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. I want to recommend my book, Will It Fly? Not just because sales, but because truly I do believe that the strategies and the, the tactics I put in the book to help you with your business are smart, but also more than that, the strategies and the exercises to help you determine your direction so that you can have a business that supports that, not the other way around, right? I want to, I want you to have a business that supports your lifestyle, not a lifestyle that supports your business. Right. And those are two totally different things. So thankful for this conversation today. And uh, why did I why did I say no to Tony Robbins? Um, number one, he was doing a podcasting tour. And I knew that it wasn't because he wanted to build a relationship with me. He just wanted to get in front of my audience. He was coming out with a money related book. And this was one that I um, didn't really 100% agree with in terms of like all that I, I had read it and like a lot of it was good. I mean, it's great. Um, but I wasn't ready to have him just tell everybody what to do. And it's my responsibility to, for my audience, um, guide people in a way that allows them to not be influenced by others without further research and understanding. So, you know, that it's more of a moral thing. I mean, there's other people who are more obvious to say no to, like, I'm not going to mention any names, but there's a lot of people, maybe people who have had garages full of books and Lamborghinis before that have wanted to get in front of my audience. And again, yeah. Having those partnerships would be cool. And yes, they could probably promote a lot of my stuff and I'd make a lot more money, but it's not worth it to me to the expense of my trust that I have with my audience. And who knows what they would do with that, uh, with those emails or, 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 or with you. So for me, I know that that comes with a lot of responsibility and, you know, they need me more than I need them. Right. So anyway, thank you so much for today. I appreciate you, everybody. Today uh, was amazing. I'm going to talk about real quick where we are landing tomorrow in terms of time. What time is our show going to be tomorrow? We are going to have our call at, it's probably going to be 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Pacific. Let's go 9 a.m. Pacific. Cool. So 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, and we'll go from there. So, hey, everybody, thank you so much for coming in today. Your support always means the world to me. 
and I look forward to seeing some of you, students of mine, in office hours in about a half hour. I'm going to go hang with family for a little bit, uh, probably prepare a little bit of lunch, and I'm going to see you in about a half hour. Uh, and then after that, I have a webinar later today with Jay Klaus, which I'm really excited about to talk about freelancing. If you're interested in freelancing at all, you can still sign up and, and register for that. It's free training. And Jay is a master of that. He has been on the podcast uh, this past week. And if you enjoyed that, you can get more and even get some questions answered from him at smartpassiveincome.com slash webinars. Again, smartpassiveincome.com slash webinars. Thank you for today. You are amazing. Take care. And as always, Team Flynn for the... Let's go. This is the Income Stream to help you achieve your dream. All while we keep it clean. This is the Income Stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go. But then you leave inspired with no feet required. The Income Stream with Pat Flynn. Say bye, Jarvis. Bye, everybody. I don't know why I gave him that voice. Um, appreciate you and your time today. And I hope that you enjoy... Uh, the rest of your day and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow or the next time you can come on. So I appreciate you. Take care. Goodbye, Jarvis. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Appreciate you. <laughs>